Assignment nine, communication law, Dr. Dewberry. All right. Is violence and pornography acceptable in the eyes of the American Constitution? Having almost finished reading the Dean Strassen's What Everybody Needs to Know, and having completed eight weeks of in-depth analysis of the various amendments, I feel as if I can speak strongly on today's topics. Each and every day, new things are happening that challenge the amendments of the United States, and we must be educated on all to become better United States citizens. All the things that are taught in our childhoods to be wrong, the Constitution of the United States would tend to disagree. Today, we are going to touch on how the amendment protects speech of violence, pornography, as well as speech that can provoke violence against the speaker or others. So main point number one, kind of just talking about how the U.S. Constitution, the amendments, protect um, pornographic um, material. When it comes to people having an attack on pornography or people having displeasure with it, it is considered a non-emergency and something people are not necessarily concerned with. Pornography can cause harm to people as, according to a part of the hashtag MeToo movement, women see pornography as a loss of dignity and safety for women. But all in all, Strassen on page 180 of What Everybody Needs to Know, she wraps it all up and states this. Read straight from the book here. In sum, regardless of how pornography is defined and regardless of the precise goals of those who advocate restricting it, these restrictions inevitably end up targeting much sexual expression about matters of public concern and much that is highly valued by people across the political spectrum, including anti-pornograph um, activists on both ends of that spectrum. So all in all, you know, pornography, it's, it's an awkward situation here. It's used to um, pleasure groups. It's used to display an idea of, you know, sexual um, innuendo and sexual subject and matter. But it doesn't necessarily, you know, invoke violence. There's nothing that the Constitution can use to get away. It's not a large concern um, in the eyes of some people in society. A uh, main point number two, talking about violent speech and why the amendment protects it. Uh, the Constitution will protect violent speech if it is not a sufficient direct connection to violence. For example, if someone makes a violent speech spreading hate and speaking in a negative connotation, but does not directly act upon that violence swiftly to the targeted subject, that speech will be protected since no physical harm is induced. Strassen explains this further on page 182. All right. Current First Amendment law permits government to restrict speech due to its potential uh, provocation of retaliatory violence against a speaker or others. In only one restricted, limited situation under the current narrow concept of punishable fighting words. So as that says, it says when it provokes violence. If it does not provoke, provoke violence, there's nothing the U.S. Constitution can do about that. Um... Just because there is violence within a speech, it does not necessarily mean that violence will follow. It is it could be used as a way to garner interest in a certain campaign or a certain movement, um, grab attention to it, and intrigue a large audience. Main point number three, kind of just talking about, once again, along the lines of violence, but also violence against a specific speaker or a group. Similarly to the point mentioned above, violence will only be punished if it is acted upon. On page 183, Strassen explains this further. We just go on the next page here. The Supreme Court has struck down every one of the multiple fighting words convictions that is reviewed under this standard because law enforcement officials had invoked the fighting words concept to punish speech that fell far short of it, including much speech that protested the official's conduct. So kind of just same idea as the previous point, the previous point you made in past weeks. Just because the speech is violent, contains violent material, um, it doesn't mean that it necessarily can be punishable because no physical harm is induced, nobody is hurt, nobody is um, hurting from these actions. It's just, it's just words to you know, rile up an audience, rile up a group of people um, and get people moving. Um, but as long as no physical harm is induced, they can't do much about it. 
Um, so sum it all up, the amendment will protect anything that does not ensue violence. Pornography will also be frowned upon, but there is not enough to get it banned or removed since it's not doing anyone physical harm in the eyes of the Constitution. And lastly, violence is acceptable as long as, once again, no physical harm is induced. I don't like saying violence is acceptable, but, you know, if you were going to put someone behind bars, you got to have some pretty good reason to do so. And just because somebody was hurt by words, unfortunately, that is not enough. Um, everyone kind of going along that everyone has the right to do and say what they want. Is it frowned upon? Of course. Does it need to happen? Of course not. But whatever anyone needs to do to get a point across, they can. And as long as they don't overstep set boundaries by the U.S. Constitution, they're all set to do what they shall please. Thank you very much. Have a good week.